This is intended to be a short video that summarizes the accounting cycle. Don't be concerned that you don't understand every little detail in this video, but what's important is that you understand the big picture and the importance of the accounting cycle. So remember the whole point of financial accounting is to prepare financial statements so we can tell the world how we did. We'll prepare an income statement that tells the world whether we were a success. Did we make money last year or did we lose money last year? We'll have a statement of owner's equity that says if we made money, did we keep it in our business or did we pay it out to our owners? And then at the end of the year, we'll have a balance sheet that'll show what we own, those are assets, versus what we owe. And the difference between what we owe, our assets, and what we owe, our liabilities, is our equity in the business. Well, how do we know our salaries and wages expense was 5200 How do we know that prepaid insurance had a balance of $550 at the end of the year? We know that because we keep track of the balances in those accounts in a process called the accounting cycle, where we make journal entries to record transactions, we make adjustments to get them into the right periods, and we close them out at the end of the year. So our textbook has nine steps in the accounting cycle. Some will have eight. Our first step is to analyze transactions. The first step is to analyze the transaction. Is there something for us to record? So if cash is changing hands or we're earning revenue or we're incurring an expense, there's something for us to record. So if we decide in step one there is something for us to record, then we make a journal entry. That's step two of the accounting cycle. We put a date, we debit a specific account, debit means left, and we credit a specific account. We may be debiting or crediting multiple accounts if it's a compound entry. There's always the same amount of debits as there are credits, and we stick a little memo down here to tell the next person what just happened. That's step two of the accounting cycle. So in step two, we've got everything in chronological order as it happened to us. Step three, we reorganize that data by posting those journal entries into individual ledger accounts. So a ledger account might look something like this. It's got the account title, it's got the account number, it's got a column for the date, a column for an explanation, a reference. That just tells us which journal page it came from. In this case, it's page one of the journal. There's the debit, $15,000, and then the balance in this account. It'll keep a running balance out there in the last column. But that's a lot of writing. So over the years, accountants and accounting textbooks and accounting teachers and accounting students have agreed instead to use T-accounts, which are just graphic representations, simplified graphic representations of the ledger accounts. Here you see the $15,000 debit. The only thing that's missing is that it doesn't keep a running balance. Just like step three was simply reorganizing the data from step two, step four reorganizes the data from step three. We list all the accounts in a special order, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. And next to each account, we list the balance in that account. Please note, there's not a dollar amount for debits and a dollar amount for credits. We list the balance in each of these accounts. Step five is about adjusting journal entries. They're simply journal entries that get our revenue and our expenses into the right period. They never affect cash. They aren't triggered by real events in the real world. They're triggered by the passage of time or by us looking at a list that reminds us that we have to make these adjusting journal entries. And they never affect cash. They always affect one income statement account and one balance sheet account. In this example, I show the interest expense, which is an income statement account in red, and the balance sheet account, which is interest payable, is in black font. So step five is making adjusting journal entries to get our revenue and our expenses into the right periods. Step six of the accounting cycle is to prepare an adjusted trial balance. So just like the trial balance, we list the accounts in a certain order, except now their balances have changed slightly due to the adjustments. In this example, the accounts in red are the ones that changed from the trial balance. And now if you look closely, you can see that down here at the bottom we have our revenue and our expense accounts that's what we need for income statement here's our owner's equity accounts and everything above that are our balance sheet accounts 
So now that we've organized our data properly, it's a pretty simple matter to prepare our financial statements. We start at the bottom of our adjusted trial balance and take our revenue minus expenses to create our income statement. Then we create our statement of owner's equity by taking our owner's capital at the beginning plus our net income minus our drawings to give us our owner's capital at the end. Then we take the account balances from the top of the adjusted trial balance and turn those into our balance sheet. The only tricky part is that we use that owner's capital balance that we created in the statement of owner's equity when we create the balance sheet. Owner's capital at the beginning plus that income minus owner's drawings gives us owner's capital at the end. That's the number we put in here. And that's the number we're going to have to create in the owner's capital when we come to step eight of the accounting cycle. So there's a few different ways to look at step eight. We're at the end of the fiscal year and we can think of our expense and our revenue accounts as buckets that have to be emptied every year. We can think about the fact that we have to start counting our sales and our expenses over again every year. We can think about that we promised the world we do owner's capital at the beginning plus then income minus owner's drawings gives us owner's capital at the end. However you look at it, that's exactly what we're going to do when we come to step eight. So our revenue and our expense accounts are both going to get closed into income summary. So for an instant in time, income summary is going to have all our revenue as credits and all our expenses as debits. So if we made money, the balance of that account, the revenue minus the expenses is going to be our net income. And then we're going to close that into owner's capital. Owner's drawings, which has a debit balance, we're going to credit it and we're going to debit owner's capital. We're going to reduce owner's capital by the amount of the owner's drawings. And the final step in the accounting cycle is to prepare a post-closing trial balance to make sure we closed out all the accounts we were supposed to close. At the end of the fiscal year, let's make sure we closed out our revenue and our expenses and our owner's drawings. If we look at our post-closing trial balance and we see some revenue or some expense accounts or the owner's drawings account here with the balance in it, we know we missed an account and we have to go back and close it out. So that's the accounting cycle. The whole point of the accounting cycle is to create our income statement, our statement of owner's equity, and our balance sheet. And there's nine steps that begin with analyzing the business transactions, journalizing, posting, preparing a trial balance, making adjusting entries, preparing an adjuster trial balance, then preparing the financial statements in step seven. That's the whole point. Then at the end of the year, close out our temporary accounts and then prepare a post-closing trial balance to make sure that we closed out all our accounts. And that's all there is to the accounting cycle. Hope that helps.